Eric, after everything, after short off season and COVID and testing and injuries and ups and downs and play in and all this other stuff, what's it mean to know that you've checked the first box? Uh, yeah, it does mean something. I, we don't want to just, uh, you know, act like uh, it's nothing. Uh, it's not everything. Uh, it's not ultimately what we want. Um, but I think, um, you know, our group has uh, approached everything that's been thrown at us, uh, you know, with the right uh, mindset. There have been a lot of ups and downs and um, different experiences that uh, I think we've used to, to uh, you know, develop some, some grit you know, with this group. Um, and so it's the first uh, first box that we want to check. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously we want to keep on going, but um, but it, this first step is important. And I, I think these, you know, last few, few weeks have been, you know, really good for our team. The, the level of competition has gone up around the league and um, it's just kind of sharpened our sword or, or given us opportunities uh, to, to get better. Do it, you talk about the grit, the adversity to do it tonight, obviously not having Jimmy for the second half. Obviously you'd prefer to have him, it goes without saying, but yeah, but just kind of a microcosm of the season that a curveball is going to be thrown at this team kind of no matter what. Yeah, like, you know, there, there's just been so many things that uh, have come our way and, and, you know, that's pretty true for virtually every team in the league, you know, this year. Um, that we developed that mindset that, uh, you know, that uh, we're not going to make excuses and, and you just focus on uh, the task at hand. And, and that's what our guys did. Uh, nobody put their head down. Um, and we've, we've had a lot of, you know, uh, time without a, a, a lot of our, our guys, including Jimmy, you know, just last week. Um, so, you know, the guys really responded um, in a great way and, um, you know, the vibe and the, the energy, you know, of, uh, of the group in the second half was terrific. Thank you, Eric. Uh, next, we go to Ira Winderman. Eric, uh, continuing off of Tim's thoughts there, you know, Jimmy, obviously, he's a closer. Games get closed, games get tight. Everyone turns to Jimmy. How heartening is it to see that so many other guys stepped up, whether it was Duncan with 13 points in the third, Goron with 14 in the fourth, K Nunn playing to the finish, Bam dominating in the middle. That, that for as much as it's great to have Jimmy, that there are other guys, and as you showed tonight, sort of other closers. Yeah, and, and you know, that's who we are. We're at our best, you know, when we have uh, a lot of guys uh, in rhythm, uh, with confidence, uh, helping each other, you know, generate good looks. Um, you know, the, mo the more guys we have as, as true viable weapons, the better it is uh, for our team. And I think that what was really important in the second half, a bunch of guys stepped up, um, but Bam really anchored us in a, in a lot of ways that, that Jimmy normally does. Um, the ball was going through him, uh, usually uh, to start whatever action we were getting to, and then other guys, uh, you know, stepped up, uh, you know, made a bunch of plays from, from there. You know, Tyler, Gorn, Duncan were all uh, in Came on, we're all terrific in that second half. And then could you please fill us in on Jimmy? They even showed on TV Jimmy walking over to you, showing that he couldn't see or that he was having vision problems. What yeah, was that it's, process it's like? Not, uh, you know, from the concussion, it's more like uh, getting smacked in the eye. And so, you know, um, you know, all of that. Uh, he was warming up and with a ball in the locker room to start the fourth quarter, um, gearing up, getting ready to play. Um, but I think I thought it was really good for our team uh, to be able to finish the game, um, you know, and have to do it in a different way, you know, than we did the other night when Jimmy was so spectacular in the fourth quarter. Will Jimmy be subjected to any concussion protocols that you know? Not that I know of, but I'll, I'll find out. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. All right. Next, we'll go to Will Manso. Hey, Spo, there's always the thought that you want to be peeking into the playoffs. And this team, as you just referenced, last couple of weeks showing a lot of good signs. How close are you to being where you want this team to be as you head toward these final three games in the playoffs? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, it's not like, you know, you, you arrive or you feel like you've arrived. Uh, this is just a, a never-ending uh, process, uh, you know, until the season ends. Um, so... We're trending in the right direction. Guys are feeling, uh, you know, good about, um, you know, 
where we're going, but that doesn't guarantee anything on a night to night basis. Um, you know, our, our health has started to come around too. That always helps. Um, but I think, you know, developing those habits of not making excuses um, during the course of uh, a season where a lot has been thrown at us, I think was really important. Next, we'll go to Anthony Chang. Thanks, Bo. Uh, Tyler has dealt with some things this season, whether it's injury or just up and down play. But, you know, ever since he's come back from injuries, really played well, especially offensively, and he's making a lot of shots. But aside from just making shots, what, what have you liked about how he's played in these in these three games since returning from the foot issue? Well, I, you know, I think the whole season has been really good for Tyler to experience this. Uh, his rookie season was uh, not typical, you know, for most young players. And, you know, I say this even now, look at all the rookies this year. There have been a lot of up and down moments for, you know, virtually or the majority of them. Uh, and that's a typical season for a young player. Um, and then you have to learn the league, um, you know, face adversity, uh, uh, you know, uh, respond to up and down uh, opportunities and play and competition, all of that. Um, you know, and, and for the most part, everything was smooth sailing last year. This year, you know, he's had to deal with a bunch of different things, uh, including you know, minor na nagging injuries, um, you know, storylines that are different, uh, a role that's a little bit different. I think he just always uh, approaches it, you know, the right way. He comes in trying to get better, uh, trying to make improvements to be better um, for the team uh, and to, to impact winning. Um, and it hasn't been just about whether he's scoring uh, or not. I think that's that's you know always the, the challenge for young players is everybody wants just to see what that final your final line is in the, in the scoreboard, um, but we're developing him, you know, as a complete um, player to learn how to win, to impact winning, and he's come a long way. Um, and I, I think it's been a large part because of his mindset and approach to everything. Thank you, Spo. Next, we go to Cooper Moorhead. Spo, you mentioned uh, things running through BAM a lot tonight. You know, with the league getting somewhat of a handle on some of what was his bread and butter, you know, offensive actions last year, how do you think he's handled the adjustments offensively that have had to happen around him, not just through him? Uh, in what way? What do you mean? Like working the ball to the post and having to run different actions through them. Yeah, you know, I think it's just a, a, a slight uh, adjustment. You know, he, he spent a lot of his time at the elbow um, in high post area, you know, and last year and the year before. Um, this is just getting him a little bit uh, uh, lower, and then we're continuing to put him in both spots. So this is just part of his constant evolution, take on more responsibilities and as teams uh, scout and adapt to us, we have to continually evolve. And, and he's been a big part of that. His player development and his growth every single year, you can make a case that each year he's improved, you know, equally as much um, in, term of, in terms of his overall game. And that could be said, you know, this year as well, coming off of an all-star year. All right, next we go to Naveen with the Rappler in the Philippines. Hey coach Mabuai, congratulations on the win. You got some big games. You got some big games coming up against Philly and Milwaukee, both teams with something to play. Philly lost today. They still haven't secured the number one seed. Milwaukee's there for number two. And these are two teams that you played well against last season, but two teams expected to contend for what you guys are aiming for. So how big of a test will it be for you guys, especially that the playoffs are so close now? Yeah, you know, we'll just focusing on Philly will be enough to uh to keep, you know, uh, our uh, interest and time and focus. Um, and they've been playing, you know, great basketball. They've been uh, arguably the best uh, defense team in the league and MVP candidate and Embiid. Um, they'll have to get to the film, but, um, but it's been hard to not notice, you know, how well they've played this year. And next we'll go to Barry Jackson. <laughs> Eric, it's been a sustained five good weeks for none. Just how impressed you've been by how he's played, by how Kendrick has played. 
Yeah, you know, it's again, uh, people will only look probably at the, the scoring, but he's had um, a lot of good moments uh, this year. And I think, you know, as a basketball player, he's much improved over last year. Um, and that's always the hard thing, you know. People will just look at, you know, how many points he scored last year and try to compare it to this year, whether he has a higher scoring average. He's improved in other areas. Um, making offensive reads and as a defender, he's, he's much better. Um, and that's all we care about. He's really stepped up and, and given, a, given us a meaningful minutes and impactful winning minutes.